Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Git and how you can use Git on Windows to manage your source control. So Git was a project that started in about 2005 by Linus Torvalds, who is the creator of the Linux kernel. And it was created as a way to replace the BitKeeper source control system, which was what the Linux kernel source code was kept in prior to that. And there was a, a licensing disagreement between the Linux development team and the owners of BitKeeper, where they ended up basically revoking the license to use that. So Linus decided to build his own source control system. And he purposely didn't want to use the existing solutions out there, like Subversion, because he's very much against the sort of centralized model that was introduced with tools like CVS originally, of which Subversion sort of tries to do a very similar thing, but uh, a bit better. So he tried to build his own, and uh, after not long, Git was born. And around the same time, there were various other distributed source control systems created in order to solve a similar problem, the other main one being Mercurial. And the main difference of these source control tools over something like Subversion or TFS is that they work in a distributed manner, and that is there doesn't have to be a central repository when working with Git. Typically with Subversion, you have a Subversion server which holds on that server the repository with all the history of all the source code in there. And when you check out from that repository, it pulls down only the latest snapshot of the source files to your local machine. So you have the latest changes from your local machine and the server holds the, the full history. Well with Git and other distributed source control tools, basically the entire history of the repository is stored locally on your machine. And if you choose to have a server when working with Git, then the server side is essentially an exact copy of the same repository that you have on your machine. So the entire source control repository is stored locally. So what I'm going to do is go over sort of simple workflow with Git and show how you can create repositories and work with them. So I've got my command line up here, and Git is very much a command line driven tool, although there are GUIs available. We can have a look at some of those uh, a little bit later. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a repository. And I do that by typing the command git in it, and then the name of the repository I want to create. So in this case, I'm just going to call it git demo and it tells me it initialized an empty repository. And if we uh, bring that up, you can see at the moment we have an empty directory with this single directory in it called .git, and that is the entire git repository. If you're familiar with subversion at all, then you'll know there's .svn folders that subversion litters throughout your source tree. But with git, there's just one .git folder, and that's the entire repository, and that's stored at the root of your working directory. And there's several things in there, which we'll look at a bit in more detail later. The most important thing is this object directory, and inside here is where git will store the compressed contents of your source files. OK, so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to work with the MVC Music Store sample uh, application that's available on CodePlex. I'm just going to use that as the source code for this demo. Uh, so if I just open this, I'm just going to copy that and paste it into our git demo folder. And the first thing that we'll see is this, this git ignore file. And this allows us to specify patterns of files that we don't want to check into source control. And I'm just uh, basically excluding the, the bin directories from our ASP.NET app and local user files that we don't want to be checked in. So I'm going to come over to the command line again. And let's have a look what git tells us. I'm going to go into this directory. And I'm going to type git status. And it tells us there are several untracked files in this repository. First thing is the git ignore, our solution file, and then our source code directory. And what we're going to do is we're going to add those files to git. So the first thing I'm going to do is say git add, git ignore. So I'm going to add the git ignore file first, and it tells me, or rather it doesn't tell me that it was added successfully. And if I do a status now, it will tell me that changes to be committed. So this is something known as the staging area in Git, and it allows you to choose which files that have been modified or uh, are new uh, should be committed into the repository when we do our next commit. So you can think of commits as sort of two-staged. Uh, so for every change you make, you need to 
add it to the staging area and then once you're happy that your staging area contains everything you want to commit then you commit the, the change set. So we've added our git ignore file so I can now say git commit and that's going to pop up my text editor and allow me to type in a commit message. In this case I'm just going to say added git ignore and uh, that's done. It's now committed that into the repository and we can see that by if we type uh, git k this brings up the repository visualization tool and we can see there that we have our commit added git ignore as the first commit in the repository uh, and it's saying that it's on the master branch. I'll talk about branches a bit later but master is basically the same as trunk if you're familiar with subversion. This is your main line of development. So we've got other files that we want to check in as well. In this case our solution and our uh, source code directory. We don't have to add individual files. I don't have to say git add MVC Music Store .sln and then git add MVC Music Store to add those two things. Uh, what I can just do is say git add dash a. The a stands for all, and if I do that, it adds all untracked files to the index. So if I say status, we can now see that all these files that are part of the project are now going to be committed. So I'm going to commit that and say initial import of source. Save and close, uh, and there we go. If we come back over to our source code directory and have a look in the .git folder and go into the objects, we'll see now that there's all these subdirectories that it's created. And in those are all the blobs containing the contents of our files that we've just committed. And what we'll see is if we bring up git k is that each commit has associated with it uh, an ID. And this is a long a uh, SHA-1 hash of the contents of everything in that commit uh, that make it unique. Uh, unlike things like uh, Subversion, uh, there isn't a numeric identifier for each commit. And this is because of the distributed nature of Git. Um, so because commits can happen in a different order on different people's machines, as we'll talk about later, there needs to be some way of identifying uniquely the commit uh, without relying on a sequential numerical index. So in this case, it uses a SHA-1 hash. So we can uniquely identify a commit using uh, using this, or Git's quite nice and it allows us to use just the first few characters to identify that commit.